Oprah Winfrey is one of the most famous and successful women in history. She is an inspiration for millions, powerful but kind. This global icon had the power to influence a whole generation of people and build an empire for herself. However, there are still a few stars who aren't fans of Oprah, and they haven't been afraid to discuss it on other talk shows and in interviews. From the talk show host who insulted her weight on air to the musicians who think she's a hypocrite, unfriendly, too wealthy, and too powerful, it turns out that Oprah is not a universally loved figure. Some have put their feuds to bed over the years, but there are still a few stars who can't stand Oprah Winfrey. Here is a list of 15 celebrities who are not her biggest fans. Are they right to have such an opinion of her? Did she really do something to deserve their hate? Let's find out. Seal. It appears that Oprah Winfrey may have lost the support of singer Seal, particularly when considering any future election cycles. In the wake of the Golden Globe ceremony in January 2018, Seal took to Instagram to express his discontent. He posted a meme that included multiple photos of Winfrey alongside Harvey Weinstein, a disgraced movie mogul known for numerous allegations of sexual harassment and assault, including rape. One of these photos seemed to depict Winfrey steering singer Rita Ora toward Weinstein. Seal accompanied the images with a scathing caption that read, Oh, I forgot. That's right. You'd heard the rumors, but you had no idea he was actually serially assaulting young starry-eyed actresses who in turn had no idea what they were getting into. My bad. The meme itself featured the text. When you have been part of the problem for decades, but suddenly they all think you're the solution. Angelina Jolie. It's often assumed that two prominent humanitarians would find common ground, especially when working towards a greater good. However, it appears that this wasn't the case when it came to the relationship between Oprah Winfrey and Angelina Jolie. In a surprising turn of events, Jolie reportedly declined to assist Winfrey in launching her Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls in South Africa. According to a source cited in Star Magazine in 2007, Oprah thought Angelina would jump at the chance because she knows how much Angelina loves Africa. Oprah says it's the last time she'll ask Angelina to help with any of her causes. The insider went on to reveal, Angelina has never forgiven Oprah for siding with Jennifer Aniston after Brad Pitt split from Jen. Rachel Ray Considering Rachel Ray was following in the footsteps of Oprah and carving out a career with her own daytime show, taking over the talk show cooking scene, you'd think that Ray would have the utmost respect for Oprah, who was instrumental in helping her along the way. But, in 2007, Ray was accused of making terrible insults at Winfrey's expense. Ray went a little too far one night and claimed Winfrey was in drag in her movie Beloved, 1998. She added, Winfrey has a problem with being black, and called Winfrey demanding, and some other words we can't say. Yikes. Of course, Ray's camp denied everything. Insiders suggested this was a real war between the two, and Ray harbored some extremely harsh feelings. Something must have happened to get Ray so heated. Joan Rivers. The late Joan Rivers left an indelible mark on television with her no-holds-barred humor and sharp wit. But it wasn't always smooth sailing, especially when it came to her interactions with Oprah Winfrey. In a memorable incident dating back to 1985, during Oprah's inaugural appearance on national television, Rivers fat-shamed the emerging talk show queen on The Tonight Show. Oprah revisited this disconcerting moment in her book, Food, Health, and Happiness. She recounted the experience, revealing... It was all going smoothly. I was starting to settle in. And then it happened. Joan interrupted with perhaps the only question I hadn't prepared for. So how'd you gain the weight? Wait a minute. Did she just use my national television debut to ask me why I was so fat? The studio started spinning. The word fat reverberated in my brain. As if that wasn't enough, Rivers, seated behind Johnny Carson's iconic desk, didn't stop there. She chided Oprah, 
telling her she didn't want to hear excuses and that the weight gain should never have occurred. Rivers, with her characteristic candor, even wagged her perfectly manicured finger at Oprah, highlighting that she was still a single woman and challenging her to return 15 pounds lighter the next time she hosted. The fallout from this incident revealed a less than pleasant dynamic between the two television icons. Sources allege that Rivers held a deep disdain for Oprah, describing her as completely opportunistic. According to insiders, Joan Rivers believed that Oprah's true talent lay in exploiting people's suffering and emotions for the sake of television ratings. David Letterman The David Letterman-Oprah Winfrey feud is often associated with an awkward joke made by Letterman at the 1995 Academy Awards. But according to the late-night host, their animosity actually began earlier than that infamous incident. In a 2010 interview on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, Letterman revealed, This predates the Academy Awards. She hated me long before then. He recounted an encounter that occurred while they were both on vacation with their respective partners. She was with Stedman. I was with my then-girlfriend Regina. We were both at a restaurant having lunch on vacation. I said to Regina, Oh, this is hilarious. I'm going to make Oprah buy us lunch. Letterman went on to explain that when the waiter came by, he pointed to Winfrey and told him, Oh, this woman right over there. Winfrey has been kind enough to take care of our check. This playful maneuver resulted in them enjoying a free lunch, but it also marked the origin of their feud, according to Letterman's perspective. However, Winfrey has a different take on the matter. In a 2012 interview with CBS News, she mentioned feeling uncomfortable during an appearance on Letterman's show as a guest. She admitted that she didn't speak to him for 16 years afterward, during which he made a series of jokes at her expense. Despite their differing accounts of the feud's origins, it's clear that they have since reconciled and put their differences behind them. 50 Cent Rapper 50 Cent known for his straightforward and often controversial comments, didn't hold back when it came to his opinion of Oprah Winfrey. In the January 2006 issue of Elle magazine, he famously referred to Winfrey as an Oreo, a term that implies a person is black on the outside but white on the inside. His gripe centered around his perception that the talk show Queen had shifted her focus from representing black women's viewpoints to catering primarily to middle-aged white American women. As a cheeky jab, he even named his miniature schnauzer Oprah to highlight his critique of the hostess. However, the two managed to have a conversation and address their differences in 2012 during an episode of Oprah's Next Chapter. In a unique setting, Winfrey visited 50 Cent at his grandmother's home, providing an intimate backdrop for their discussion. During their talk, the rapper explained that his initial reservations about Winfrey were related to her apparent disinterest in featuring hip-hop artists on her show and her vocal disapproval of the use of the N-word. He recalled, I would see moments when you would discuss your feelings on the rap culture and everything that was wrong with the culture was what was on my CD, and I was like, oh, she doesn't like me. He expressed his desire to at least coexist, even if they couldn't be friends, acknowledging the complexities of their interactions. Ludicrous. It appears that our list is featuring a pattern, with several hip-hop and rap artists finding themselves on less than amicable terms with Oprah Winfrey. This time, it's Ludacris, the renowned rapper and actor, who takes the spotlight. While Luda has gained fame for his roles in the Fast and Furious franchise back in 2004, he encountered a rather contentious moment during an appearance on Oprah's show to promote his film, Crash, one of his early ventures into the world of acting. Ludacris had every reason to be proud of his acting debut, but he felt that Oprah had blindsided him during their conversation. Instead of delving into the film and his performance, the talk show host steered the discussion toward the lyrics in some of his songs. 
In an interview with GQ, the actor shared his perspective, revealing, She edited out a lot of my comments while keeping her own in. We were doing a show on racial discrimination, and she gave me a hard time as a rapper when I came on there as an actor. What added to Ludacris's disillusionment was Oprah's post-taping confession. According to him, she admitted that she wasn't a fan of empowering rappers. This revelation left him feeling like he was in hot water, as he suspected that the interview wouldn't be presented in its proper context, and that he might become the target of her scrutiny. Janet Jackson It seems that the rift between Oprah Winfrey and members of the Jackson family extends beyond Michael, as Janet Jackson reportedly has one of the most significant grievances among the Jackson siblings. The source of Janet's discontent stems from an incident in which Oprah brought Michael Jackson's children onto her show shortly after the King of Pop's passing. While this information originates from the National Enquirer, they suggested that Janet was far from pleased with Oprah's actions. According to their report, she thinks Oprah took advantage of Michael's children for TV ratings. Janet told her Michael would be heartsick that Oprah used his kids as pawns. The situation escalated to the point of a heated telephone argument between Janet Jackson and Oprah on the day the interview was taped. Despite Janet's objections, Oprah proceeded with the interview, which only further strained their relationship. Since that day, Janet Jackson has not been a fan of Oprah Winfrey. Monique The feud between comedian and actress Monique and Oprah Winfrey has its roots in a complex series of events that unfolded in 2010. It all began when Monique received critical acclaim and won an Oscar for her role in the film Precious, 2009. In the lead-up to the film's premiere, Oprah interviewed Monique's brother, Gerald, who Monique had accused of sexually abusing her during their childhood. What made matters more distressing for Monique was the presence of her and Gerald's parents in the audience during the interview on Oprah's show. Monique later revealed her mixed feelings about the situation in a since-deleted Periscope video. She claimed that she had initially given Oprah her blessing to conduct the interview, but the inclusion of her parents in the audience took her by surprise and deeply affected her. As time passed, Monique struggled with forgiving Oprah for her role in the interview, even though she had somewhat reconciled with the talk show host. A source reported in May 2010 that Monique had decided to forgive Oprah, but had not forgiven her family. She believed that her parents had never fully acknowledged Gerald's involvement in the alleged molestation. The feud resurfaced in 2015 when Monique publicly stated that powerful figures in Hollywood had blacklisted her, hinting that Oprah might have played a role. During a comedy performance, she sarcastically said, Thank you, Miss Oprah Winfrey. Ice Cube the exclusion from Oprah's show can leave even seasoned celebrities feeling perplexed and somewhat left out. Rapper and movie star Ice Cube found himself in just such a situation, despite his extensive career and significant impact on the entertainment industry. While many of his co-stars from various projects received invitations to appear on Oprah's show, he never received the coveted invite. In an interview with FHM, Ice Cube expressed his frustration, stating, I've been involved in three projects pitched to her, but I've never been asked to participate. This omission seemed particularly perplexing, given the praise Oprah had heaped on his movie Barbershop, which led her to feature cast members Cedric the Entertainer and Eve on her show. Eventually, Ice Cube couldn't help but voice his suspicion that Oprah might not be a fan of hip-hop, a genre closely associated with him. As it turns out, his hunch was not entirely unfounded. Oprah had openly expressed reservations about having rappers on her show, citing concerns about how it might affect her public image. Ice Cube, however, was less than pleased with this explanation. Whoopi Goldberg In an unauthorized biography of Oprah Winfrey by author Kitty Kelly, titled Oprah, A Biography, an interesting twist in the Oprah saga involves the talented Whoopi Goldberg. According to the book, 
after Goldberg received an Oscar nomination for her role in The Color Purple, 1985. Her relationship with Winfrey seemed to take an unexpected turn. It was as if Goldberg had become persona non grata in Oprah's world. Kelly's biography highlights that, following Goldberg's prestigious Oscar nomination, the comedian never made another appearance on Winfrey's talk show, and she was conspicuously absent from Winfrey's 2006 Legends Ball, an event that celebrated influential African-American women. The apparent rift between these two talented women continued until Oprah decided to invite the entire cast of The Color Purple, 1985, onto her show. This reunion provided the perfect opportunity for Oprah and Goldberg to address the lingering tension between them. During the show, Oprah recounted a chance encounter at a party hosted by their mutual friend Tyler Perry. It was there that Goldberg took the initiative to confront Oprah about the perceived snubs and coolness between them. To Oprah's surprise, Goldberg thought Oprah was mad at her, while Oprah believed the reverse. In the end, the ladies agreed that it might have been a much better idea to simply pick up the phone and communicate years earlier rather than allowing this unspoken feud to persist for so long. Rachel Ray Rachel Ray, a celebrity chef who successfully transitioned into the realms of publishing and television, found herself at the center of a scandal in 2007 that involved racially charged insults aimed at none other than Oprah Winfrey, her mentor. The incident unfolded during a night of indulgence with colleagues, which apparently included copious amounts of alcohol and food. Ray's behavior allegedly took a turn for the worse, as she became extremely loud and aggressive. During this inebriated state, she was said to have made comments insinuating that Oprah Winfrey was dressed in slave drag in her movie Beloved. Ray even went further, suggesting that Winfrey had a problem with her own racial identity. It's worth noting that a representative for Rachel Ray vehemently denied these allegations. The National Enquirer added fuel to the fire by claiming that Ray had also referred to Oprah as a demanding bitch. This alleged war of words between Rachel Ray and Oprah painted a picture of a strained relationship that was far from the mentor-mentee dynamic one might expect. Roseanne Barr Roseanne Barr, known for her candid and often controversial opinions, didn't hold back when expressing her thoughts about Oprah Winfrey's endorsement of Barack Obama over Hillary Clinton for the U.S. presidency in 2008. In a passionate statement on her website, Barr wrote, Oprah has given us Schwarzenegger, Sick, and Dr. Phil. If that was not offensive enough to decent thinking people, now she brings us Obama. She went on to express her belief that Oprah's choice of endorsing Obama was rooted in a preference for men over women who stood for the rights of working American women, rather than focusing on issues like glamour and dieting. Barr concluded with a strong stance, declaring that the Times called for a woman president before any man, regardless of their background. However, the following morning, Roseanne Barr offered an apology, acknowledging her earlier comments. She expressed regret for sounding as if she didn't like Oprah or Obama, clarifying that she did indeed have admiration and love for both of them. Barr admitted that she had allowed her preference for Hillary Clinton to overshadow her appreciation for Oprah's positive contributions to society, ultimately leading to her impassioned response. In her apology, she praised Oprah for the good she had done in the country and the world at large. In January 2018, Roseanne Barr revisited the topic of Oprah Winfrey, albeit with a different tone. She humorously stated, Of course, I love Oprah like everybody else, before playfully suggesting that she might be a better president than Oprah or Susan Sarandon, and even hinted at surpassing President Trump in the presidential arena. Chris Brown The relationship between Chris Brown and Oprah Winfrey took a complicated turn in the aftermath of a domestic violence episode in 2009 when Brown assaulted his then-girlfriend, Rihanna. Oprah, 
known for addressing important issues on her show, aired a special episode dedicated to domestic violence, during which she delivered a stern message, he will hit you again. Chris Brown's response to this episode and Oprah's stance was mixed. While he commended Oprah for shedding light on the issue of domestic violence, he felt that it was a personal affront. Brown had previously performed at Oprah's school in Africa and believed that her response to his situation could have been more supportive. He expressed his feelings, saying, I commend Oprah on being like, this is a problem, but it was a slap in my face. I did a lot of stuff for Winfrey, like going to Africa and performing for her school. She could have been more helpful, like, okay, I'm going to help both of these people out. Oprah's representative issued a statement to TMZ, emphasizing that Oprah took the issue of domestic abuse very seriously and expressed her hope that Chris Brown would seek the counseling he needed. In response to the situation, Chris Brown highlighted the importance of having positive role models in his life, particularly older black male figures who could guide and mentor him. He expressed a desire for constructive support and learning from his mistakes, rather than facing criticism. Jonathan Franzen Author Jonathan Franzen found himself embroiled in a feud with Oprah Winfrey in 2001, when he openly criticized her renowned Oprah's book club. In an interview with Salon, Franzen referred to her book selections as one-dimensional and schmaltzy. However, when his own book, The Corrections, was chosen for Oprah's book club, he was faced with a dilemma. Franzen expressed his reservations, stating, I see this as my book, my creation, and I didn't want that logo of corporate ownership over it. In response to Franzen's comments, Oprah Winfrey withdrew her invitation to have him appear on her show. Realizing the potential impact on his book sales, Franzen backtracked on his remarks, claiming they had been taken out of context. He expressed regret for inadvertently hurting Winfrey's feelings and acknowledged her significant role in American literature and reading, stating, I said things that ended up hurting Winfrey's feelings. I feel bad because the person being hurt is actually a really good person for American writing and reading, in an interview with the New York Times. Despite the initial discord, it appears that Oprah Winfrey and Jonathan Franzen have since reconciled. In 2010, Winfrey selected Franzen's book, Freedom, for her book club and extended an invitation for him to appear on her show, signaling a renewed rapport between the two. And that's all for today's video. Have you been following any of these celebrity feuds with Oprah Winfrey? What are your thoughts on these conflicts and the ways they were resolved or continue to simmer? Share your insights and opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this exploration of celebrity disputes, don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing insights into the world of entertainment and beyond. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.